What if I told you that a single Satoshi, worth $0.0109 today, could be worth exactly $1 in the next decade? This isn't crypto fantasy. This is mathematical inevitability based on real economic data that most people are completely ignoring. Welcome back to 1 Million Sats. I am your host, Rudy Cade. The $1 Satoshi isn't just a meme. It's a mathematical destination that becomes clearer when you understand the real forces driving Bitcoin adoption. With Bitcoin at $109,000 today, we're already 10.9% of the way to this seemingly impossible milestone. But here's what most people don't realize. The path to $1 per Satoshi isn't linear, it's exponential. Let's start with the undeniable reality of fiat currency debasement. The US dollar has lost 96% of its purchasing power since 1913. That's not opinion, that's Federal Reserve data. But here's the shocking part. The pace of debasement is accelerating. Since 2008, the Federal Reserve has expanded the money supply by over 400%. The European Central Bank has done the same. The Bank of Japan has been printing money for over two decades. Every major central bank is trapped in a debt spiral that can only be resolved through currency debasement. The math is simple. Global debt is $315 trillion, but global GDP is only $105 trillion. That's a 300% debt to GDP ratio that cannot be repaid without massive inflation. Every dollar printed to service this debt makes Bitcoin relatively more valuable. But currency debasement is just the beginning. The real driver of Satoshi value is the mathematical certainty of Bitcoin's scarcity meeting exponential demand growth. There are exactly 2.1 quadrillion Satoshis that will ever exist. That's 2.1 quadrillion Satoshis for 8 billion people. That's 262 to 500 Satoshis per person on Earth forever. Now here's where it gets interesting. Current Bitcoin ownership is extremely concentrated. Approximately 2% of the world's population owns any Bitcoin at all. That means 98% of humanity has yet to enter the Bitcoin market. When they do, the mathematics become explosive. Consider the wealth transfer happening right now. Baby boomers hold approximately $68 trillion in wealth globally. As this generation ages, this wealth must transfer to millennials and Gen Z. These younger generations are five times more likely to own Bitcoin than traditional investments. A 10% allocation of boomer wealth into Bitcoin would require purchasing 6.8 million Bitcoin at current prices, but only 21 million will ever exist. The corporate adoption trend is accelerating beyond most people's comprehension. Tesla holds 10,000 Bitcoin. Strategy holds over 597,325 Bitcoin. El Salvador continues accumulating. But these are just the early adopters. Apple has 162 billion in cash. Microsoft has 104 billion. Google has 120 billion. Amazon has 88 billion. If just these four companies allocated 5% of their cash to Bitcoin, they would need to purchase 2.4 million Bitcoin, more than 11% of the total supply. The sovereign wealth fund mathematics are even more staggering. The Norwegian sovereign wealth fund manages $1.7 trillion. The Saudi Arabia Public Investment Fund manages $925 billion. China's sovereign wealth funds manage over $2 trillion combined. A 1% allocation from just these three entities would require purchasing 500,000 Bitcoin at current prices. But here's the real kicker. Institutional adoption isn't happening in isolation. It's happening while individual retail adoption is exploding globally. Strike has enabled Bitcoin adoption across Africa. Lightning Network is enabling micropayments across El Salvador. Bitcoin ATMs are appearing in every major city globally. Each new user creates additional demand for the fixed supply. The network effects are becoming undeniable. Metcalf's law states that network value increases with the square of users. Bitcoin's network has grown from 1 million users in 2013 to over 100 million users today. That's a 10,000x increase in network effects. If Bitcoin reaches 1 billion users, the same as Facebook or Instagram, the network effects increase by another 100x. Consider the remittance market alone. Global remittances total 800 billion annually. Traditional money transfer services charge 6 to 8% fees. Bitcoin Lightning Network enables transfers for pennies. If Bitcoin captures just 10% of the remittance market, that's $80 billion in annual Bitcoin demand. At current prices, that's 734,000 Bitcoin purchased annually for remittances alone. The energy mathematics support massive Bitcoin appreciation. Bitcoin mining currently uses about 150 TWh annually, roughly 0.6% of global electricity production. Critics call this wasteful, but they're missing the bigger picture. 
Bitcoin mining is becoming the buyer of last resort for stranded renewable energy. Solar and wind farms generate excess power during peak production times. Bitcoin miners can utilize this excess power, making renewable energy projects more profitable. This creates a positive feedback loop. As Bitcoin price increases, mining becomes more profitable. Higher mining profits justify more renewable energy investment. More renewable energy makes Bitcoin mining more sustainable. Environmental concerns about Bitcoin disappear, removing regulatory barriers to adoption. The store of value mathematics are compelling beyond traditional investments. Gold has a $15 trillion market cap and took 5,000 years to achieve that valuation. Bitcoin has a $2.1 trillion market cap and achieved it in 15 years. Real estate has a $380 trillion global market cap, but real estate can be built, taxed, and confiscated. Bitcoin cannot be printed, taxed easily, or confiscated if stored properly. As traditional stores of value become less reliable, Bitcoin becomes more attractive. Property taxes are increasing globally. Gold storage and insurance costs are rising. Government bonds offer negative real yields after inflation. Bitcoin offers the only store of value that combines scarcity, portability, divisibility, and censorship resistance. The technological improvements support higher Bitcoin prices through increased utility. Lightning Network enables instant cheap Bitcoin transactions. Taproot improves privacy and smart contract capabilities. Future improvements like simplicity and covenant proposals will enable more complex Bitcoin applications. As Bitcoin becomes more useful, demand increases while supply remains fixed. The regulatory clarity emerging globally removes uncertainty that has suppressed Bitcoin adoption. The U.S. has approved Bitcoin ETFs. El Salvador has made Bitcoin legal tender. The European Union has created clear Bitcoin regulations. As regulatory uncertainty decreases, institutional adoption accelerates. Here's the mathematical reality. For one Satoshi to equal one dollar, Bitcoin needs to reach $100 million per coin. That sounds impossible until you realize that's only a 917x increase from today's $109,000. Gold increased 4,000x from 1970 to 2011. Apple stock increased 1,000x from 1997 to 2012. Amazon stock increased 1,200x from 1997 to 2018. A 9110 next increase over 10 15 years is not historically unprecedented for revolutionary technologies. The purchasing power mathematics make $1 Satoshis inevitable. If the US dollar loses another 50% of its purchasing power over the next decade, the same rate as the previous decade, then Bitcoin only needs to reach $50 million in today's purchasing power for Satoshis to equal $1. Factor in global Bitcoin adoption from 100 million users to 1 billion users and the mathematics become compelling. The wealth inequality mathematics drive Bitcoin adoption. The richest 1% of people control 47% of global wealth. The poorest 50% control just 2% of global wealth. Bitcoin provides the first truly global permissionless store of value that anyone can access regardless of geography, politics, or economic status. As wealth inequality increases, Bitcoin adoption accelerates among both the wealthy seeking to preserve wealth and the poor seeking to access financial services. The geopolitical mathematics support Bitcoin's rise. U.S. dollar dominance is declining as China, Russia, and other nations reduce dollar reserves. The BRICS nations are creating alternative payment systems. Global trade is becoming more multipolar. Bitcoin provides a neutral, non-political store of value that no single nation controls. As geopolitical tensions increase, Bitcoin becomes more attractive as a neutral monetary technology. The demographic mathematics guarantee Bitcoin adoption. Millennials and Gen Z will inherit $68 trillion from baby boomers over the next 20 years. These generations are digital natives who understand Bitcoin better than traditional finance. They're more likely to hold Bitcoin than government bonds. They're more concerned about inflation than deflation. They're more skeptical of government promises than previous generations. Here's the timeline for $1 Satoshis based on current adoption trends. If Bitcoin adoption grows at the same rate as internet adoption, reaching 50% of the global population in 15 years, and if institutional adoption continues accelerating, and if governments continue debasing currencies, then $1 Satoshis become mathematically inevitable between 2035 and 2040. The supply shock mathematics are already beginning. Bitcoin miners are selling less Bitcoin than they're mining. Long-term holders are accumulating more Bitcoin than exchanges are selling. Corporate treasuries are buying more Bitcoin than individuals are selling.
The supply available for purchase is shrinking while demand is growing exponentially. The $1 Satoshi represents more than a price prediction. It represents the mathematical endpoint of the greatest monetary transition in human history. Every dollar printed makes Bitcoin more valuable. Every person who discovers Bitcoin increases network effects. Every company that adopts Bitcoin validates its monetary properties. The mathematics don't lie. The $1 Satoshi isn't a fantasy, it's a mathematical inevitability. The only question is whether you'll accumulate Satoshis before the rest of the world figures out this mathematical certainty.